Hello everybody, uh, this is the Moshix Mainframe channel. Welcome back. Um, I am Moshix and today we're going to be looking, as you can see here on the screen, at the uh, uh, mostly uh, compiler pack. And the reason for that is that over the last couple of months I've received uh, repeated requests to explain how to use the compiler pack and how to install it and make it work on, uh, on uh, MBS 3.8 and TK4. And so I thought that um, uh, finally I should just do it and I did this I did once um, do the whole procedure here it's not it's really not that difficult uh, actually it's very easy um, I, I, I did it once a couple of years ago maybe two three years ago and I haven't done it since because I just use it and it's always it's always working for me I did um, it took some major amount of work uh, I think it was last year or maybe even two years ago that I took this volume uh, which contains all these compilers um, and, and it's as you can see here it's a 3350 um, file image uh, this or disk image um, 3350s have about I think about 300 megabytes of um, uh, disk space and I I made it work for a 3390 which is about 3 gigabyte uh, if I'm not mistaken and the reason is that I wanted to have a compiler pack where I could also put all my stuff all my source code and all my stuff that I install all in one on one volume. Now, in the real uh, mainframe world, you would never put this much stuff on on one on one volume. You try to spread out data and and um, and stuff that is often accessed through several volumes for performance reasons. But uh, in 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 an emulated world, it doesn't really matter uh, because it's all one physical hard disk anyway. And also because it's so terribly fast, I mean, it, it really doesn't matter. And if, especially if you consider that I use mostly devices with uh, um, with SSD drives, with like you know, not real mechanical drives, but electronic drives, it all really doesn't matter. So that's why I made a 3390, and it was quite a bit of work because you had to reblock stuff, you had to adapt for the different geometry of the 3390. But um, I did install the 3350 volume quite a few years ago, and so today we're gonna. So for the benefit of everybody, we're going to see how to get it done. And the reason why people were asking, by the way, for how to install this, the compiler pack is because the compiler pack has a lot of languages which we don't have in TK4, such as Snowball, Spitball, Mortran. Um, there is a disassembler on it that I use quite a bit. Uh, there's a lot of very good stuff there. And so today we're going to see how to make it work. I'm going to make a link available under this video um, on how to on how to, um, uh, uh, where to obtain the compiler pack, the 3350 compiler pack. I'm going to make available in one of my uh, GitHub volumes, uh, GitHub uh, repositories, um, so that you can download from there and play with it. But um, today, for the purpose of this video, I myself am going to get it from here, uh, because I'm doing this as we go. I mean, it's been a few years. So here's my Linux machine with my, as you can see here, uh, with my, um, Hercules, you know, TK4 is running here, and um, and I'm gonna get myself now this disk image and start working on it. And you would do pretty much the same thing; you would only download it from a different place. So once we have uh, this um, disk, we'll do a gun zip. And by the way, Windows would be much of the same, um, but you would, you know, if you know if if you use Windows, you probably know how to use Windows better than I do. I'm not. This is a Windows machine, but I'm using Linux. I'm not so good with Windows, or as I like to say, I'm not very premium with Windows. Um, so let's uh, unzip this thing. Uh, oh, it looks like I don't have gunzip, so. Okay, apt uh, install gunzip. Okay, so unzip. Oh, unzip. That's really geez. Okay, it is actually installed. Sorry about that. So uh, tar xvf sys, and we have uh, a 3350 volume here. Now the question is, where do we put it? So we, I'm going to move this. I'm going to copy actually this this sys pack over to my MBS. Uh, TK4 installation, and obviously in the DAT file, in the DASD directory where all the uh, volumes are. I'm going to copy, copy it there, and then we go to MBS uh, 
uh, 3.8. Sorry about the phone uh, ringing in the background. It's been driving me nuts all afternoon. Um, and uh, okay, well, I copied the tar file. We just, I guess, we'll just untar this one again, and then move as the to here and remove the desk directly. Okay, so now it's there. The question now obviously is, what disk address do we give this uh, volume, right? And so to do that, um, we log in to Herc01 and uh, I go here and there is a file with the IOGen. You may remember that um, the way this works with Hercules is that you have a physical of drive image such as this one it has a unit address usually a three um, a three digit unit address and that unit address needs to be supported by MVS and in MVS there is a process called the IOGen where you tell it that you want certain devices to be in certain unit numbers so that MVS knows what to look for on those unit numbers and and uh, if, if this is not perfectly aligned uh, I'm gonna write it here so um, Volume file to uh, unit Hercules unit to MVS IO gen unit. Okay, the three things must be perfectly aligned, and if they're not, nothing is going to work. So um, okay. So here we have the IO gen in sys1.sysgen.cntl and we're going to see where 3350s are supposed to be. They need, they need to be in between 240 and 24F. Okay, so let's see here 240 to 24F. So what we do now is um, I think we're going to call it 24F uh, to sys pack. 24F. Oh, 24F. Okay, you see this? 3350s are generated to be up to 24F. So let's make it the last unit there. Okay, so now we go here and we get, take um, and we go down to where the units 24 are. Okay, yeah. So um, we call it 024F3350 Das Systems Compiler Pack 24F. You see what I'm doing here? I'm mapping this file called 24F. It doesn't have to be called this way. I'm just calling it so that I know what device it is when I look at it from Linux. Uh, MBS doesn't care how you call it inside Linux or Windows. And then I'll go here. Um, and while I'm here, let's make this two CPUs. Okay. Um, and while I'm here, uh, I'll make this unit 24F because 24F is supported as a 3350 device. Okay. And so I'm saying device 024F. And the reason why there's a zero is because in later versions of uh, MVS, I think as of MVS ESA, if not OS 3.9, the devices became four digit numbers. And the way you deal with it in a console, you have to sometimes put a slash in front of it if you want to use the unit number as four digits. Anyway, but um, this is beyond the purpose of this video, but uh, this is what we're doing here. System compiler pack 24F. Okay, so having done that, now we need to shut down our MVS here so that the, it can re-IPL re and have the device there. So uh, you know that you can shut down MVS by doing shutdown here, but obviously, or unfortunately, that's a little bit too slow. Um, so what I usually do is, well, I don't know where that screen is. Shut down, okay. So this is now shutting down. And uh, Uh, so we just have to wait until this goes down. Mm. It's going to take a while. While we do that, um, let's check. Let's see what Mosley says, what the installation procedure is. 
So um, download the archive, put it in the dash volume, we're done. With Hercules and his running, attach the volume to Hercules and vary it online to MBS. We could have done that, but I prefer to test that it, it's really reading it on IPL. Uh, run the job to import connect the user catalog yeah there is a user catalog see how things are now starting to come together on the Moshix mainframe channel because um, I was talking about user catalogs about a month ago or three weeks ago and now we can start to see how this all comes together because there is a user catalog on this device here okay on this device and we're gonna connect this user catalog that's on here to the to the main catalog so that we can find stuff there, and uh, and this is the JCL to do it. So um, we're going to do it as, as soon as uh, our MVS is uh, is down, and I can restart it. I I'm not going to let you wait for that because it's a little, it's like uh, watching turds dry in the Texan sun. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop it here and, and get back again when it's done. Okay, MVS shut down. I also uh, uh, updated my Linux here because it it had been running for. <coughs> quite a while so um, usually the way I start MBS again is by I, I invoke screen first why do I invoke screen so that um, I can actually have multiple uh, screens you see here so I go into MBS 3.8 and I um, run MBS and I this way I have multiple screens um, so it's starting to execute let me see here any Problems with the configuration? Nope, this seems to have gone all well. Okay, so let's connect here. Um, okay, um, let's reconnect. Yeah, and as soon as uh, MVS here is done IPLing. We'll get. Yeah. So here it is. Um, and uh, let's go 3.4. I don't believe we're going to be able to see it yet. Yeah, because we have to obviously first uh, mount it. Um, uh, okay, vary you or F online. Okay, let's see what it says now. One cannot be accessed, we have to mount it. Uh, mount, and you have the command for mount here. Um, so, um, mount the mount command is going to be here. Um, you see it here. Okay, so 24F volume equals standard label is compiler pack use equals private and it's important we put in private so uh, MBS doesn't start using the volume to put its just two temporary files and stuff on it or uh, you know unspecified volume allocations for data sets and stuff okay so now it's mounted and now we should be able so sys compiler pack yeah and here it is so <laughs> that was simple so here's all our stuff and that's the reason why people are so enthusiastic about the compiler pack. We have assembler assembly, we have an assembler G here, which is a much better assembler than, than the iFox assembler. We have standard with MBS 3.8. It's so good that even IBM started using it. Um, we have uh, basic here, uh, although that's an older version than the one I made a video for. Uh, we have a disassembler, we have uh, um, Mortran, we have Pascal, which is also on TK4. We have the Stony Brook Pascal, which is not on TK4. Um, we have, oh, what happened here? Uh, 
uh, and we have a bunch of other things. Um, so now, um, yeah, we can access it, but the work is not done yet. We need to connect it so that when we execute uh, jobs that need to access this, um, this uh, uh, libraries that they are ready to be run. Uh, while I'm at it, I'm always compressing a little bit because I don't know how compressed these volumes are. Okay, what happened here? Um, hmm. Use. Okay, uh, I don't know what I did here. Uh, Coblib. I tried to compress the, uh, the COBOL library and we didn't like it so much. COBOL libraries and the PL1 libraries are, are a little sensitive here. Uh, blocking and all that stuff is, is a little wacky. Um, so uh, now that we have it working, what we need to do is connect it. Um, and so to connect it, um, we go here and we take the, uh, this is the JCL to connect connect the user catalog that's on this device, on this volume, to the master catalog. The way to do it is herc01 u connect. Okay. Uh, we make this herc01 connect. Um, as usual, we make this h. Um, Modify herc01 region 4m. Okay, so that is. We don't need to have all this text here. Um, so now all the new data sets are going to be created with a sysc uh, high level qualifier are going to end up on this user catalog. So that's uh, since I use the sysc. Um, uh, high level qualifier quite a bit. Um, I I should probably not run this last part here. Uh, define alias and then name relate. But I'm going to leave it because uh, this is not for me. This is all for you. That's why I'm doing all this. Um, okay, so this should actually run. Sys compiler, but that's the card that access it. The volume serial with the unit type and the so this should run out of the box. Let's execute it and let's go look at the spool. Oh, it didn't go through. Format error in the message level field. Okay. Message. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is not going to run because we need uppercase. JCL doesn't like lowercase to this day. Um, condition code 12, that's even worse. Um, what happened here? Above text bypassed, verb name import. Oh, I know what it is. Yeah, we need to move this by a couple of bytes over to the right. Okay. It doesn't like stuff on the first column. Um, I don't know why it's, but anyway, we got it done. Um, so this, everything else looks good. So we execute this again. Yeah, maximum condition code and it uh, looks good. So we connected the user catalog to the master catalog. So now the master catalog and the catalog on this new volume, they're talking to each other. They know each other, everything is nice and dandy. Um, now, what we need to do is uh, change the parmlib number for JAS2 um, so that uh, it knows um, it knows about uh, interpreters flag. Uh, I think flag. Yeah, we're not going to run this job here. 
Um, what we're gonna do Okay, so we need to change that list for sure, and we need to change also IAPF. So let's go do this, do this manually. Um, Yeah, we're actually going to do this manually. I really don't think we need to mess too much with uh, with this. Um, we're going to do this manually. So um, we're going to take the just to proc lib and change whatever we need. This is how I've done it last time. Uh, you just have to be careful to not make any mistakes and won't be able to IPL, but make a backup of your MBS directory and if something goes wrong, you just, uh, you know, at this, time, at this time you could just shut down properly, make a copy of everything. If in inserting these two lines you make mistakes, then, you know, and you can't IPL anymore, then you just uh, go back to your backup and make sure that you do it properly. Okay, so this is one proc lib. I'm going to take the just two, yeah this little guy here and we're going to insert a new line such as this one and we're going to put it in the step lip um, just one level below okay mm -hmm. oh actually it is already there there is actually proc zero already so we just take this and add this okay um, insert nope put it here okay so now we've added sys compiler pack this uh, proc lib on this volume so that should be all good Uh, let's make sure we don't have any mistakes. Yeah, this looks good. And now we go to the APF uh, in this one parm lib. And parm lib. And there is an IA APF locate APF. Uh, where is it? I E A IEA APF. Uh, if you see it, shout. Uh, oh, here it is. <laughs> so uh, we need to add um, this as an authorized library. So we're going to do it here. However, don't forget to put the comma in here, otherwise, it's really not going to like it. So I think having done this, um, all we have to do now is update that list, which is the list of all the volumes to be mounted at IPL. Um, so this looks good. Uh, let's go to the very bottom and we have that list. And we're gonna go all the way to the bottom, replicate the last one. So we have the format already given to us. We can just overwrite. Um, and we're gonna say one, two, um, and then we call it uh, mostly compiler pack. Okay, this is wrong. Mostly compiler packages. Okay, so now we should have this all done. Um, and unfortunately, we have to shut down again and re IPL to make sure that everything is working fine, which is also, I think, what, what he's saying here. Um, and we also already added that to the Hercules configuration. So this should work. I don't see a reason why not. If you do, then tell me to stop now. <laughs> um, but I think we're just gonna go ahead and do this. Uh, so I'm gonna shut down from here because it's just faster. Oops. 
um, FBSP pilot shot fast. Okay. Um, once we have this working, then um, all we need to do is try some stuff, um, such as the, um, you know, we could try spitball or snowball or any other thing. The procedures are all on the Sys compiler pack already there. Uh, While well, this is shutting down, let's see. Yeah, I picked up the second CPU I put in before when we edited the configuration file. So that's all good. Um, so, what just happened here? Okay. Okay, machine is hardly moving. Um, let's see where we are. Yeah, still shutting down. TCAS not accepting logons. Yeah. The shutdown is always, it always takes long in the mainframe world, whether Her Hercules or, or real hardware. It's just the way it is. Um, I think I'm just gonna stop here so you don't have to watch this and then we pick up once uh, I've, uh, I'm ready to IPL again. Okay, I just shut down, um, as you can see here on the screen. Um, let's restart it immediately. Reconnect our terminal, uh, connect, and let's see how this goes. Um, yep, it's coming up. Let's see the max rate, how fast this has been. 117 MIPS, not bad at all. I've seen uh, this particular Intel Nook run up to about 300 MIPS in tight loops um, and doing about 10,000 IOs per second. I mean, this would have been a giant computer just 15 years ago, a giant mainframe. That have cost probably $15 million or something. Um, okay, so we have TSO again, let's go into TSO. Let's see what 3.4 says. Um, yep, it's, it sees it. And uh, Jest2 obviously came up. So yeah, this went all well. Um, so the VAT list worked, uh, the procedure for Jest2 worked. Now, uh, if we wanted to call, I don't know, a uh, procedure here, we would uh, have to specify in the JCL sys c for instance i don't know this is this assembly here where is it um yeah here uh, the disassembler is called dism something dism i think it's this one nope um, where is the assembled disassembler <laughs> Where's the assembled disassembler? Sounds funny. Um, well, I mean, you would have to play with that a little bit. Disassembler links the disassembler. Uh, if you want, we can try this uh, just to show that it's all. Oh, uh, missing R. Disassemble. Message level class A. Message class H. And um, hmm. yeah, we would have to go and, and change all the Gerhard. I think I know who this is. This is Gerhard, Gerhard Post Pichel. He's the one who worked uh, significantly to make MBS 3.80 or 31 bit available, um, but he's uh, a wizard. Uh, He's uh, one of the MBS, true MBS wizards. Uh, stuff that he can do, I'm just looking up to him. Um, test the disassembler. Yeah, I mean, we could make this work if we just, um, if we fix all the references, but um, I mean, I've done this before, it works. <laughs> uh, you will have to take my, uh, you would have to wait, take my words for it. Show MBS, what is this? 
But I've, I had it work. Now, um, I just want to say here, uh, and then immediately unsay it, but there's no reason why this procedure that we just did, the exact same procedure, wouldn't work on any later versions of MBS. Um, just saying. Um, uh, so, um, I think this is it. I mean, there's nothing else here that I can show you guys. It just works. Uh, and uh, somebody asked me about Spitball, let's see if it's here. Um, Stony Brook, yep, yeah, Spitball is here. So, um, there is no reason why this wouldn't work. This Spitball is free software. Long before people start calling stuff open source, open source already existed way way before yeah that's the object code yeah so we have already compiled there's some test program there was a user actually uh, a, a viewer who wrote to me i think today about speedball so here is a your speedball test program this is speedball source no reason why you shouldn't be able to execute this um yeah um just say exit program speedball uh from cc linklib yeah, um, then we can actually try to run this. Uh, Herc01 Spitball class A message class H. Okay. Um, maybe we put in wall equals serial equals sys. Okay, yeah. Just to make sure, um, let's run it. See what happens? Oops! Start. Uh, the job was 74, and uh, unit field specifies incorrect uh, device type. Why is it saying that? Hmm. Let's try to say unit. this in oh you know what um let's i think i know what this is start uh, three, uh, four sys c uh, codlib yeah this should actually work so um let's try again if not we're just doing remove the volume serial reference Yeah, this went through. So whoever uh, asked today about speedball, here you have your speedball. Works perfectly. Okay, so we proved it. Table of factorials. Okay, so that's what it what it did. Uh, beautiful. Calculated factorials. Very nice. Looks beautiful. Um, I always try to see the label of the compiler to see when it was when the compiler was last updated. Um, yeah, that's what I was looking for. Speedball 360, copyright 1971, Robert Dewar. I think uh, this is the person who actually wrote Speedball, if I'm not mistaken, this, these two people. Uh, yeah, beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. Uh, so that's it. I mean, there's nothing else I can show you. I mean, I know nothing about Speedball. I, I wrote uh, this last summer a little bit of Speedball on an airplane. Well, in a long airplane ride, um, it's not like I know nothing, but next to nothing, I would say. And and this is the assembler that it generates. Oh, this is beautiful. This is BAL 360. Um, so this is 360 um, assembly. It doesn't even it doesn't even include any 370 instructions. This will run on anything. Um, it's beautiful. It's a thing of beauty. Um, oh, I love it. I mean, how can you not love stuff like this? It's just, it's just unbelievable. So, um, yeah, I'm very happy I read this. I did this test run. Uh, this is how 
you get the system compiler pack from uh, Jay Mosley up and running on your TK4 MBS system. This will work for MBS 3.8 update 8 or update 7 or 6. I've tried it with several different versions of, and it will also work with uh, TK4 update 9 because I've already tried with update 9 as well. Uh, this is it. I hope this uh, helps you. Um, if you have any questions, please post any questions below this video. I will also put again below this video where you can get the, uh, the system compiler pack disk image. Um, if you like this video, please do press on the thumbs up button and uh, please do subscribe to my channel to get updates and notifications uh, of future videos and see you on my next video. Thank you. Goodbye.